Jaya Krishna Balaram, Jaya Krishna Balaram, Krishna Balaram, Jaya Krishna Balaram. Jai Krishna Balaram, Krishna Balaram, Krishna Balaram, Jai Krishna Balaram. Jai Krishna Balaram, Giri Govardhan, Krishna Balaram, Jai Giri Govardhan. Hi, Krishna Balaram, the Krishna Balaram, Krishna Balaram, hi, getting over done. Hi, a Godani Thai, Godani Thai, Godani Thai, hi. Hey, go on me. Hi, go on me. Hi, go Adi Leela, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Adi Leela. Anyway, we'll just do something in the meantime. I'll tell you a pastime. Anyway. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So, when Krishna was in Vrindavan and he was concluding his transcendental pastimes, many of the associates of Krishna were in anxiety. I mean, not only anxiety, but complete, utter m misery that Krishna would be leaving. And so he told one cowherd boy, his name was Sridham, my dear Sridham, I'm going, but we'll meet again. In other words, he said, I'll be back. So Sridham, he decided to wait. So he went into one cave. And uh, he waited. So he waited for 5,000 years. <laughs> Finally, when the Lord appeared again, Brajendra Nandana Ye, Sachi Sutta Hoilo Se, Balaram Hoilo Nitai, when Balaram had come again as uh, Nityananda, and Lord Chaitanya was the reappearance of Krishna in Vrindavan. 
Nityananda re remembered that Sridham is still waiting in this cave. So he went over and said, Hey, Sridham, who's that calling me? It's me, Balai. Balai, really? Whoa. He came out and he saw Nityananda. He said, you're not Balai. Yes, I am. No, you're too small. You're not Balai. In fact, no one but Balai could beat me in a race. So if you're Balai, let's race. Okay. So they decided to race around Govardhan Hill instead of running. <laughs> and, you know, Nityananda is running and Balaram and Sudha Sri Dham is running and they're 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 running. And, and, and uh, Sri Dham's in the lead, but all of a sudden Nityananda decides to take the lead. So, and he passes him up with no problem at all. And at the finish line, it's the tie. He won the race. And he said, only Balaram could beat me in a race. You're Balaram. And then all of a sudden, Nityananda showed his form as Balaram. And Sridham was, I guess, very happy, <laughs> amongst other things. <laughs> but it's a beautiful pastime where, good shot. OK, thank you. <laughs> You're supposed to hit me in the head first, and then like that. That's so I could come back to normal consciousness, whatever that is. I haven't really figured out what that is yet. <laughs> but we're, we're, if anybody knows, let me know what it is, so I can, so I can you know process it, put it in my hard drive, and then later on bring it up. <laughs> Normality, whatever that is. Okay, nobody in Krishna consciousness is normal. <laughs> Whatever that means, nobody knows what normal is anyway. Okay, so this is a beautiful, beautiful section of the Adi Lila. In fact, it's a very long chapter. It's got about how many verses? It's got uh, 235 verses, and some of the purports are really, really detailed. So this chapter is called The Glories of Lord Nityananda Balaram. So I'll read a little bit. First, we'll chant the first verse. Vande Mahabhutai Vande ma vande natabhutai swaryam. Is it up there? Yeah, five. Yeah. Vande natabhutai swaryam. Sri nityanandam ishvaram. Yasya chaya tatsarupam. Agenyapi nirupyate. I have to be able to see what I'm reading here. Nan bande natai bhutai svaryam. Sri nityanandam ishvaram. Yasya chaya tatsarupam. Agyen agay napi nirupyate. Vande natam bhutai swariham. Sri nityananda mishvaram. Yasya chaya tatsarupam. Agya agya napi nirupyate. Good luck. Okay, one down. Who's next? 
Come on, guys. Come on, show those girls you can chant. Come on. <laughs> Alexander. Ladies, One day, let me offer my obeisances. Ananta, the temple president. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Unlimited. Un our unlimited temple president. <laughs> You know, temple presidents are unlimited. <laughs> or sometimes they look like they are. <laughs> okay, Arbuta. Wonderful. wonderful. Our wonderful unlimited temple president. <laughs> Give me a chance. I always harass him, so I need a chance to glorify him now. <laughs> Aishwaryam, whose opulence, Sri Nityanandam, unto Lord Nityananda, Ishwaram, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Yasya, whose Itschaya, by the will, Tatsarupam, his identity. Agena, by, by the ignorant, api, api even, even, nirupyate, nirupyate. can be ascertained. <laughs> Translation, let me offer my obeisances to Lord Nit Sri Nityananda, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, whose opulence is wonderful and unlimited. By his will, 
Even a fool can understand his identity. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda All glories to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, all glories to Lord Nityananda, all glories to Advaita Acharya, all glories to all the devotees of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I have described the glory of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in six verses. Now, in five verses, I shall describe the glory of Lord Nityananda. The Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna is the fountainhead of all incarnations. Lord Balaram is his second body. Srila Prabhupada's purport. Lord Sri Krishna, the absolute personality of Godhead, is the primeval Lord, the original form of Godhead, and his first expansion is Sri Balaram. The personality of Godhead can expand himself in innumerable forms. The forms have unlimited potency and are called swamsa, and the forms that have limited potencies, the living entities, are called vivinamsa. Text 5. These two are one and the same identity. They differ only in form. Lord Balaram is his first bodily expansion of Krishna, and he assists in Lord Krishna's transcendental pastimes. Purport. Balaram is a swamsa expansion of the Lord, and therefore there is no difference in potency between Krishna and Balaram. The only difference is in their bodily structure. As the first expansion of Godhead, Balaram is the chief deity among the first quadruple forms, and he is the foremost assistant of Krishna in his transcendental activities. Text 6. The original Lord Krishna appeared in Navadvipa as Lord Chaitanya, and Balaram appeared with him as Lord Nityananda. Text 7. May Sri Nityananda Ram be the object of my constant remembrance Sankarsana, Seshanaga, and Vishnu, who lie on the Karna Ocean, Garbadak Ocean, and Ocean of Milk, are his plenary portions and portions of his plenary portions. Purport, Sri Sarup Damodar Goswami has recorded this verse in his diary to offer his respectful obeisances to Lord Nityananda Prabhu. This verse also appears as the seventh of the first 14 verses of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Verse number eight. Sri Balaram Goshani Mula Sankirshan Pancha Rupa Tarekarini Krishnara Sevanam. Lord Balaram is the original Sankarsana. He assumes five other forms to serve Lord Krishna. He himself helps in the pastimes of Lord Krishna and he does the work of creation in four other forms. So now I'll read the verse I'll speak on. Srishti Adika Sevatanra Ajanara Palan Sheshirupa Kara Krishtera Vivita Sevan. Translation He executes the orders of Lord Krishna in the work of creation and in the form of Shesha. He serves Krishna in various ways. According to expert opinion, Balaram is the chief of the original quadruple forms and is also the original Sankarshan. Balaram, the first expansion of Krishna, expands himself in five forms. Mahasankarshan Karanabdisai, Garbodakasai, Krishnadakasai, and Shesha. These five plenary portions are responsible for both the spiritual and material cosmic manifestations. In these five forms, Lord Balaram assists Lord Krishna in his activities. The first four of these forms are responsible for the cosmic manifestations, whereas Shesha is responsible for personal service to the Lord. Shesha is called Ananta, or unlimited because he assists the personality of Godhead in his unlimited expansions by performing in an unlimited variety of services. Sri Balaram is the servitor Godhead who serves Lord Krishna in all the affairs of existence and knowledge. Lord Nityananda Prabhu, who is the same servitor Godhead, 
Balaram performs the same service to Lord Garanga by constant association. Namam Vishnu Vadaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami, Tinamani Namaste, Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pacharine, Nirvasesa, Sunyavari, Pastyatyade, Satarine. Prajendra Nandanaye, Sachi Sutta, Hoilo Se, Balaram, Hoilo Nitai. So this verse is mentioned as a clarification of identity. Um, Lord Chaitanya and Lord Krishna are one and the same. There's no difference. Lord Nityananda and Lord Balaram are also the same personality. The forms are different, and their performance, when they manifest their pastimes in the material world also, are different. But still, it's the same personality. And sometimes we see people make a distinction between these similar identi same identities. But the distinction as here is being made is only in bodily structure between, the t between Krishna and Balaram, and of course between Lord Nityananda and Lord Balaram. Uh, the form is quite different, but still the same person. The Lord is unlimited and his forms are unlimited and he becomes one and he becomes many through manifesting his oneness in many different ways. Those who think that there is a two different personalities are given a pretty strong uh, label. The word is Pashandi. Pashandi actually is translated to mean atheist. So in other words, anyone who thinks that Lord Nityananda and Lord Balaram are different is an atheist. <laughs> the uh, Shastras don't mince words to make people feel good. They want to get right to the point. Jai Panchatattva Ki Jai. So they're explaining that. So when you see these five personalities on the altar, you should know that they also have other identities and other leelas just like with Garanga Mahaprabhu is uh, Krishna, but he's in the mood of Srimati Radharani. Lord Nityananda is, sometimes we call him Nityananda Ram. He is also non-different than Balaram. Advaita Acharya, he is Mahavishnu and, uh, and uh, Sadashiva. He, they're both Mostly he's Mahavishnu, but Sadashiva is also there. And of course, uh, in Gadadhar, he is actually, as is mentioned in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, he is Radharani with the element of Lalita Saki also. He has appeared in that form. And of course, uh, Srivas, he is Nardamuni. <laughs> Nardamuni. So the same personalities appear in different forms for different purposes and to develop relationships with devotees at different, at different times during their manifest pastimes. So Balaram is really a key person in everything we do because Balaram is the original spiritual master. He is Guru Tattva. In other words, he manifested his potency in the form of the eternal spiritual masters. And again, the oneness is also understood, that although there are many spiritual masters as different entities, still guru is one. God is one, guru is one. The goal of life is one, is to love God. And the process for achieving the goal of life is one, and is bhakti. Bhakti is no other process for achieving God or achieving the full manifestation of the Lord's, uh, what we say, association, presence, or God realization other than Bhakti Amam Vajana Anti, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita. So this is this variety that we see within the annals of, uh, what we, of uh, Vaishnav culture is just to give a certain sweetness and manifest the Lord 
in different forms of himself to perform his different pastimes for different purposes at different times. And Balaram does a lot of work. And it looks like it. We can't use the word work. It's not a fair word. Because on the spiritual level, there is no work. It's only service. And service is always ananda. It's blissful. So Balaram enjoys serving Krishna by assisting Krishna in his different pastimes. So when Krishna manifests his first initial expansion, that is called Sri Balaramji, again, for the sake of understanding, because the tendency for the material calculations is to enter that, that at one time Balaram manifested. But he is eternal. All the manifestations of the Lord are eternal, but they appear at different times and what we say, become manifest and unmanifested. And just like now, if you go to Vrindavan, Krishna's pastimes are still going on, but they're in an unmanifested state. In other words, if you have pure spiritual vision, you can see Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan, just like they were when Krishna was here. It's a very high level of spiritual attainment, but those pastimes are still going on every day, every minute. But because they're not manifest, the Lord has, again, returned to the spiritual world in his original form. And they're called avyakta, or unmanifested. So we have manifested and unmanifested, but there's no difference like that. So when the Lord expands into Lord Balaram, Balaram is never simply appearing. He is always there. But for the sake of understanding, in order for us to have an understanding of variety and understand that Krishna is the original source of everything. He is Adi Purusha. He, he appears to expand. He does. He does expand, but for the sake. And he, the spiritual world is also eternal, but still it is mentioned that when Balaram expands, he manifests another feature of the absolute truth called the Chaturvyuha, Vasudev, Sankarshan, Aniruddha, and Pradyumna. The Sankarshan is also an element of Balaram. And that Sankarshan, again, expands into all the Narayan features that make up the spiritual world. The spiritual world is also unlimited. So everything we know and we have in our purview and we hear about is always within the realm of limitations. So how can, how can the limited mindset understand something unlimited. It's not possible. <laughs> so your understanding will come by realization, and that realization comes by spiritual attainment. But we accept the principles based on what we say, on what we say, uh, uh, perfect authority. <laughs> so what perfect authority gives everything, that we accept that on that basis. Otherwise, from our, what we say, philosophical point of view, we, we cannot understand these higher levels. Just like even in this material world, there's so many things we don't understand. And Prabhupada would use the example. Can you understand how, when you eat food, it gets transformed into different secretions and nourishes the body in different ways? And some of it comes out one way, some of it comes out the other way. I mean, the scientists can speak a little bit about something, but they can't really understand how the whole process works. <laughs> so even in the material sense, things remain what we say hidden, or what we say un, 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 unexplainable. So from that uh, expansion of the second chapter of Yuha, of the first chapter of Yuha, the Ryan features come. The whole spiritual world is there, Vaikuntha realm. And then the second chapter of Yuha comes from that, from the Narayan expansions. And then Vasudev, Sankarshan, Anirudh, and Prajuma. Just like when Lord Ramachandra manifested his pastimes in this world, it is explained that Lord Ramachandra was Vasudev. Sometimes it's also said he was one of the weapons of the, the four weapons like the, of 
that are held in the hand of Lord Narayan. He's, he is the highest Narayan feature within the... Uh, in other words, his topmost planet, Ayodhya Dham, is the highest spiritual planet in the Vaikuntha realm. And uh, Vasudev, Aniruddha, Pradyumna, and Sankarshan were the other three brothers like that. Uh, Lakshman was actually uh, you know, Balaram, <laughs> like that. And uh, Bart, I think he was Pradyumna or Aniruddha, I'm not sure. And of course, then you had, uh, had one more, what was his name? The fourth brother, uh, Bart. Satrugna, yeah, thank you. Satrugna. So they were manifestations of the Narayan feature, Vasudev, Sankarshan, Aniruddha, and Prajumna. So from that second Sankarshan comes uh, Mahavishnu. And from Mahavishnu starts the unfolding or the creation of the material world. So Bala, as mentioned in different places, Balaram assists in so many different ways, both in Leela and in and, and unfolding the uh, manifestations of both the material and spiritual world. So we get a little bit of a glimpse of what is the capacity of Balaram's service. He, he, uh, he does a lot, <laughs> let's put it that way. If you were to be able to measure it in terms of the services that is connected with Lord Balaram. But he's not happy to simply do so much. He wants to do more and more. His nature is to want to serve. This is an interesting point in bhakti. You can tell if you're making advancement by how eager you are to serve. You can tell how much you're actually making advancement by how eager you are to serve. In other words, by, if your enthusiasm for service is good, obviously you're getting the mercy and you're taking the mercy and you're making nice advancement. And we see devotees do more and more service as they make more and more advancement because they're always enthusiastic to take on more, to do more. It becomes a feature of their spiritual progress. So Balaram is like that, and he also injects that mood into his, you know, those, those who take his instructions and follow it. So in his, uh, what we say, manifestation of serving the Lord in the different rasas, he performs all five rasas. This is Balaram. In the, uh, well, in neutrality, Shantaras, he becomes the shoes of the Lord. They're Balaram. He becomes the uh, dress of the Lord. That's Balaram. He becomes the arti paraphernalia, just like when we do the arti paraphernalia on the altar, or even here, it's actually an incarnation or manifestation expansion of the energy of Lord Balaram. He's also the umbrella of the Lord. He's the bedstead of the Lord. He's also, sometimes it says he's the jewelry of the Lord, but not always in some cases. He, uh, so in that in Shantaras, he performs various, various types of services. In Balaram, in Dasyaras, it doesn't give any details, but it says that he likes to serve in different ways. So he serves the Lord in different ways. And in Sakyaras, he's the cowherd boyfriend of Krishna. And they play in Vrindavan. And they like to dance. There's many beautiful pictures of the cowherd boys circling around Krishna and Balaram, playing their horns and their flutes and their various instruments. And in the middle, Krishna and Balaram are dancing. Can you imagine seeing that? Watching Krishna and Balaram dance? My God. People pay a lot of money to get you know, some kind of excitement in life. But that would be, would be worth a fortune <laughs> if you could find something to, you know, compensate that. Just to see Krishna and Balaram dance, that would be amazing. And you can, eventually, as you go back to the spiritual world, they're dancing. <laughs> they're dancing even now, even in the material world. Prabhupada at one time was standing in front of uh, Radha Krishna and some very respectable an intelligent Indian gentleman 
had been there, and Prabhupada was standing with him, and they were both looking at the deities. And Prabhupada said, if you could see, <laughs> you could see that they're having their transcendental pastimes right now. <laughs> In other words, the deities are not just standing like we see them. That's our vision. They're performing their pastimes right now. They're having kirtan. <laughs> Usually with Panchatattva, that's what they do. But that is, that is pure spiritual vision. But you can also attain that. I know a few devotees who had experiences like that, where if they, they were actually seeing the deities in their pastimes. It becomes a certain glimpse of mercy, and then it disappears after a while. So it is possible. And Prabhupada also could do that. Prabhupada could see that the Lord... Had, I mean, he and Prabhupada was pretty amazing, just like one time. Of course, this is not so amazing. One time, one temple president, a very uh, a senior devotee in Krishna consciousness, he was the temple president in New York. So the Mongol Arti was at 4.30. So he thought, I'm going to change the Mongol Arti to 4. So, they had, so he changed his Mongol Arti to 4 o'clock. And just not long after that, Srila Prabhupada appeared and came for, and then he's there in the morning darshan, and he's looking at Radha and Krishna, and it's Radha Govinda in New York. And he turns to the temple president, they look very tired, what time are they getting up? And then he explained, well, he thought it would be nice to get the devotees up earlier and have early Mangalarti, they could, that way they could have more time later. And probably he said, well, we, we moved the Mongol RT back to 4 o'clock. Prabhupada said, 4 o'clock. It's too early. They're tired. <laughs> so he changed it to 4.15 after that. <laughs> and then Prabhupada, when Prabhupada saw it at 4.15, he said, that's fine. <laughs> they look okay. They're rested now. <laughs> so yeah, Rupa Srila Prabhupada could see. He had that pure spiritual vision. And then could probably could talk to Krishna like that. So the pastimes of the Lord can also be manifested. They are manifested even on this realm as we develop our Krishna consciousness. This is a pure spiritual movement. It has nothing to do with just rules and regulations. It is about bringing our consciousness in, con in contact with the Lord all day. <laughs> remembering Krishna 24 hours a day, remembering Balaram 24 hours a day. So as, as a cowherd boy, they perform various pastimes together, and there's so many pastimes. One time Krishna and Balaram were standing together with the gopis, and one very arrogant, foolish demon. His name was Sankachuda. He was a, he was a, a some connected to Kuvera. And he was very wealthy. And he, because out of all the opulences that one can uh, attain, wealth makes you the most proud. It says that. People have beauty. People have some position. People have uh, strength. But the Bhagavatam says wealth is the most intoxicating form of opulence. And people who are very wealthy, of course, they're also somewhat famous too because of being wealthy. Uh, they are very, they had developed a tense sense of arrogance. So this is one personality, Sankar Chuda. Krishna and Balaram are there with the gopis. So he comes and he starts taking the gopis away right in front of Krishna. And Balaram. And like, you know, Krishna and Balaram were not even there. And the gopis are calling out, save us <laughs> from this rascal. So Krishna looks at Balaram, he says, You guard the rest of the gopis. I'll be back. <laughs> so he's chasing after Shankar Chuda, and then Shankar Chuda starts to realize I'm in trouble. And he's running, but Krishna easily caught him and then just punched him and killed him immediately. 
you know, why waste time? Well, you know, we, you go to court and then you get a lawyer. Well, you know, I stole these gopis because they owed me some money. No, no, the lawyer says no. I mean, the judge is there. No, it's not, not like that. No, you just you need instant justice, you know. So he just punched him and he was finished. <laughs> And uh, this, this demon had a jewel on his head. It was a very powerful jewel. I think it was the Shamantaka jewel he had been given. No, that wasn't the same jewel. It was the Kastupa jewel. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was the Kastupa jewel. So he took that jewel, and then he wanted to give it to Radharani. But he knew the other gopis would not. They would feel slighted. So he gave it to Balaram. He said, Balaram, you give it to Radharani later. You <laughs> sure? Yes. Not Balaram? Um, I don't fully agree yet. <laughs> but maybe you're right. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Radharani got it anyway. She was the one that got it. So the point is that you know Krishna and Balaram, they're always together, and mostly in their uh, Leela as friends in the Sakya Ras. In the Vatsalya Ras, of course, there are many, many pastimes in each of the Rasas, but in the Vatsalya Ras, he's the big older brother, and he watches over Krishna to make sure Krishna, you know, does the right thing. <laughs> In other words, he protects Krishna. He's a Krishna's protector. And the Madhurya Ras, there's not much about it, but he's mentioned he is the younger sister of Radharani. He takes that form as an Anga Manjari. And in that form, he performs uh, what we say, Madhurya Ras, with the Lord Sri Krishna. But you don't read much about that. Um, obviously, there are scriptures that do mention something like that. <coughs> Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati has mentioned that in one of his lectures. I remember one time uh, I was giving a lecture to about uh, 10,000 people in Ukraine, and it was Balaram's appearance day. Or was something related to Balaram. And I mentioned it, these five rasas and Balaram's, you know, position. And then I mentioned Ananga Manjari. And then the class was over. And one, Prabhupada, this uh, the disciple came up to me and said, Maharaj, I gotta talk to you, okay. I thought, uh-oh, I could see on his look on his face, he looked like Harani Kashipu anyway. He wasn't a full-time Prabhupada disciple. He was just, he just happened to come into the festival. <laughs> so he, he got so upset. Where did you hear that? That Ananga Mandri is, you know, Balaram and he's now and in Madhurya Ras. I mean, that's the way he approached me. <laughs> Not very, you know, kind of nice. <laughs> anyway, I don't mind. I get used to those things anyway. Somebody said, somebody said, when you insult Chandramali Swami, it's like punching the wind. <laughs> no effect. <laughs> I get insulted all the time. It doesn't bother me. I get corrected. It's okay. Life goes on. <laughs> so... Uh, so, what was I saying? <laughs> so, so uh, he, he asked me, he said, well, where did you hear that? And I said, from Radhana Swami. <laughs> and then he couldn't say anything after that. <laughs> and uh, another time I was, in, I was in Soho Street Temple in London, and, and I said something which didn't have any real spirit, any real Shastric reference. So one devotee said to me, where did you hear that? 
I said, Radhana Swami. <laughs> <laughs> and later on, Shiva Ram Maharaj was there and he heard. He said, yeah, I also hear things from Radhana Swami and I repeat them too. <laughs> so, <laughs> I hope Maharaj is not watching this class. <laughs> No, you can't be. It's too early. It's in the middle of the night in America. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so we have our authority. But I, later I found, to, just to validate that with another, you know, when we say authority, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, was where Radhana Swami got that from. So, yeah, so these are the different rasas that the Lord performs his pastimes in. And there are many wonderful pastimes, Krishna and Balaram. I didn't bring my notes with me, but there's one. Balaram, sometimes he gets angry. And he acts in a very, what we say, pretty enthusiastic response. There was a, Balaram was challenged to a dice match by one person called Rukmi. And there was another person there during this dice match. I might be leaving out some of the details. There was another person, his name was the King of Kalinga. So Balaram likes to gamble, but he's not, a, he's not good at it. <laughs> and so Rukmi and Balaram were playing dice, and they were betting gold coins. So they first bet 10 gold coins, and they threw the dice, and Rukmi won. And they, then they bet, bet the 100 gold coins. So every time Rukmi was winning, finally they bet 10,000 gold coins, and Balaram won. But Rukmi said, no, I won. And so there was an argument. And finally, the, a voice from the sky said, Balaram is the winner. <laughs> and this king of Kalinga, he didn't like Balaram for, run, so for whatever reason. And every time Balaram would lose the match, he, would, he had this beautiful set of teeth, and he would smile and laugh, and he would show all his teeth when he was laughing at Balaram for losing. Now, Balaram was getting agitated, but he kept playing his dice game because that was his focus. So finally, when, you know, at the end, when Balaram was trying to be cheated, and it was revealed that he actually won. Balaram got really angry and took out his club and smashed Rukmi. And he also hit King of Kalinga right in his teeth and gave him a complete dental operation. <laughs> he had no teeth left. <laughs> he didn't have to worry about buying toothpaste after that. <laughs> or even replacing his toothbrush. <laughs> so, and... <laughs> Now, Krishna and Rukmini were also there watching the whole thing. Now, Krishna remained neutral because if he took the side of Rukmi, then Rukmini, then Balaram would be upset. And if he took the side of uh, Balaram, Rukmini was going to be upset because that was her brother. <laughs> so Krishna remained neutral. Krishna and Balaram sometimes disagreed. Just like Krishna didn't want his sister Subhadra to marry uh, Duryodhana, but Balaram wanted Subhadra to marry Duryodhana. And they know that's the older brother and younger brother, and the older brother usually has to say, so whatever Balaram says, they're supposed to go. But Krishna thought, not this time. <laughs> so he decided to make a plan. And Arjuna was also attracted to, to Subhadra. So he told Arjuna, you dress up as a sannyasi, and then you come. And we'll invite you into dinner as a sannyasi. And then when, when the time is right, you can kidnap my sister. <laughs> so as a sannyasi, you know, that really ruined the sannyasa ashram. <laughs> it made it look like something else. So that's what... Arjuna actually did that, and he actually married Subhadra. And somehow Balaram, I, I forgot the, all the details of the pastime. If anybody knows it, they can fill it in. Go ahead, Maharaj. Yeah, please. Where do you want me to start? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
you're independent. <laughs> it's a really a nice pastime, so I want to, it's nice to hear. So, Arj Krishna, uh, Arjuna, in the form of a sannyasi, was taking prasadam mm. with Balaram and Subhadra. And Balaram was looking at Subhadra, and Subhadra was looking at ba Arjuna, because Arjuna had very beautiful bodily features. And Arjuna was looking at Subhadra with glittering, 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 glittering. Glittering, gl glittering eyes, and Subhadra was reciprocating, and they were becoming more and more attached to each other. They, she was blinking her eye, eyes. You ever see, ever see lady, ladies? They go. <laughs> <laughs> watch, watch out, guys! <laughs> when you see that, you're, you know, it's, it's, it went from yellow to red. You know. <laughs> so. We know all these things, don't, don't try to hide. <laughs> or they, or, you know, the girl will be looking at the guy, and the guy will start turning around and go. <laughs> go ahead. These are more. These are the pastimes that I'm used to. <laughs> Subhadra, so, so within her mind, she decided that she would only accept Arjuna as a husband. And Arjuna decided that he'd only, he'd actually get Subhadra somehow or another. And so Arjuna went to Vasudev, and Devaki told, her, told them, you know, that he was going to kidnap, he wanted permission to kidnap Subhadra. Mm. In the meantime, Balaram was completely oblivious to what was going on. Although he's a super soul somewhere or another, he's under the yoga maya or something. <laughs> he didn't know what was he going was on. He was under Krishna maya. He was feeding the sannyasi sumptuously every day. <laughs> it's hard to understand how Arjuna looked like a sannyasi. <laughs> His arms were not, <laughs> the sannyasis are not so, you know, well built. <laughs> So, especially his constant. No, he asked, then he, <laughs> he, asked, he asked Krishna if it was all right to kidnap her. So they said yes. So at an appropriate moment, that Arjuna put Subhadra on, on her his chariot, mm. and then it would become clear. And the guard, he he didn't kill the guards. He just more or less pushed them out of the way. Good. And then then they Subhadra drove the chariot. <laughs> And he, he made his escape. How did how did Balaram get pacified? He did well. Balaram was completely angry. <laughs> he was going to kill Arjuna. So Krishna came, and he fell down at Balaram's feet, oh. and, and told Balaram that actually Subhadra was very attached to Arjuna, and this this was all arranged with the permission of Vasudev and, De and Devaki. So then Balaram became pacified. Hmm. And he gave them a big dowry. Big? Dowry. Dowry. Okay. okay. Thank you. Nice best. I mean, the point was sometimes Krishna and Balaram, although they're so close and their love is, when we say, fixed, they also d disagree. <laughs> you see that even in the spiritual realm, that there's disagreement. <laughs> But the disagreement is always transcendental. <laughs> and from Subhadra mm -hmm. and Arjun, a son came, and that was Abhimanyu. Abhimanyu was later unfairly killed by the main Kaur Kauravas, the Kaurava generals. And later, that was avenged by Arjun. And from, but at the time when Abhimanyu, was uh, he was married to Uttara, and uh, she was pregnant when her husband Abhi Amanya was killed, and then the son was a posthumous son, and that was Maharaj Parikshit. So Maharaj Parikshit was the yeah yeah he came from that line. Okay, so so 
a little after nine. Should we continue or, or should we stop here? Quarter past. Quarter past. Any, any comments or statements about Lord Valaram? Anything? Who's stronger, Balaram or Krishna? He's carrying? Yeah. Where picture did you see? No, the cowherd boys. Balaram's there? What is he carrying? What does it look like? Plow. Well, he has a plow and he has a club. The plow is called Hala. Mm -hmm. And the, the club is called Sunanda. Mm -hmm. When I was, uh, I used to do deity worship for Krishna and Balaram, well, of course, Jagannath, Baladev, Subhadra, Maharani. And when I was in New Vrindavan, we had six sets of Jagannath deities. And they used to have their symbols imprinted on their hands. So on the right hand of Balaram was the plow, and on his left hand was the club. So when I came to Chicago, I was transferred later. I le actually, I voluntarily came to Chicago, took up residence there. I noticed that Balaram in Chicago, he had the club on his right hand and the plow on his left hand. So I asked the temple president, Kulki. I said, Kulki, can you tell me, you know, I'm in the New Vrindavan, the plow's on the right hand, now here's the club's on the right hand. So. Which one is right? He said, they're both right. He said, in New Vrindavan, there's a lot of agricultural fields. And here, there's a lot of demons. <laughs> so, he always uses his right hand. You know, he's, he's a right hand. <laughs> so, <laughs> I thought that was an interesting answer. But the club and the plow represent also. The, the plow is also interesting. Because in order for bhakti to manifest, the heart has to be in a right mood. So sometimes we have to, the, the, the heart is called like the field, the field where bhakti grows. And the spiritual master plants the seed of bhakti into the heart. And if the field is not, what we say, fertile for that seed to grow, there needs to be some cultivation. Cultivation means to remove the weeds and make the ground fertile for bhakti, the seed of bhakti to grow, which is hearing and chanting of the glories of the Lord. And that's done by the mercy of the spiritual master. So Balaram, as the original spiritual master, carries a plow, and he fertilizes the feel of our heart, so it makes it ripe for the planting of the seed. And then, of course, as it grows, and of course, as you engage, as you perform devotional service, it's not like the weeds can't come back again. They can also grow back. So then, therefore, constant cultivation, or what we say, awareness that these weeds also can come, patishta, puja, uh, various types of weeds, such as thinking oneself better than others, that's also a weed. <laughs> Even if you're advanced, one, the more advanced you make, more one sees themselves as the servant of others. Not like now I'm advanced and now I have many servants. <laughs> like that. We may accept service, but everyone knows that actually I'm, I'm, I'm a servant. So this idea, and this also is a weed, that in the more we become advanced, one may start to think that I'm, I'm, I'm better than someone else because I have a better position or I can do things more expertly or whatever. It doesn't matter. Therefore, uh, these are weeds. And so Balaram is the original spiritual master. We play to Balaram for strength, spiritual strength. He gives or he provide spiritual strength so we can practice devotional service, what we say, 
uh, progressively, nicely. He helps to remove those weeds which come by association with the material energy and attachments to the to objects of the sense gratification. You had a question? That was, oh, your question was why he carries the plow. Yeah, yeah, like that. Krishna carries a flute. That's his weapon. <laughs> he charms the heart with the playing of the flute. Krishna also has a bugle horn where he calls his cows, like that. He carries it on his left waist, left side on his waist, plays his flute. So as cowherd boys, they have their paraphernalia, like that. So to take advantage of the mercy, we need to hear and chant the glories of the Lord more. And so then, the more we hear and chant the glories of the Lord's pastimes, the more we become attracted. And that attraction develops into attachment. And as we become attached to the Lord, to hear about him, to serve him, and to glorify him, then our progress in devotional service becomes. We have to realize there's more than just doing our service in terms of the practical aspect. We need to hear and chant the glories of the Lord as much as possible. This is what purifies the heart and it develops our attraction to Krishna more and more and more. Of course, here in Ljubljana, there's always some wonderful activities going on in the form of hearing and chanting. So, but the thing is, you can never get enough. <laughs> Even in your own spare time, with, I don't know the word spare is a euphemism, but in your own time, just, you know, find times to read. Like some, some devotees will just pick up a Shastra and just read, 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 read for hours, just read. And then you become absorbed in the philosophy and, in, and these are the things that attract, that bring our mind to the spiritual platform, to the platform away from the mundane. Because that's part of the process is not only to get attached to the spiritual, but to dis get our minds away from the mundane. This material world is very contaminating. Just by being in this material world, you can't help to get some kind of contamination. If you were free from all contamination, then you would be completely joyful at every minute. So we want to be free from material contamination by absorbing ourselves and hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. And today is a very special day. He's the original spiritual master. And uh, therefore, to get the, the favor of Krishna, we glorify those things that are in relationship to Krishna, such as Balaram, and his uh, manifestations and his different pastimes like that. Okay, so any any co final comments, questions? Anything? Okay. Sorry if I woke anybody up. <laughs> we, we, in New Vrindavan, there used to be one devotee. When we would have class in New Vrindavan, everybody would fall asleep. Even the speaker sometimes, <laughs> yeah. And there was one one time one devotee was standing up and not and not and so he would not fall asleep. But he fell asleep standing up. But he fell, and he fell really hard. And when he did, he woke up everybody. <laughs> so it was really good. He did a, ni a nice service by by falling down in class. So you never can tell how service will manifest itself. <laughs> okay, but try to stay awake. <laughs> Thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam ki. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita ki. Sri Srila Prabhupada ki. Maha Mahotsava Avir Bhav Sri Balaram Maha Personality of Godhead ki. No prasadam key. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs>